Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're gonna take a look at a couple of different ways to back up your system and your files on Linux. We're gonna be taking a look at a couple of different ways to back up things in Linux. Some of them, you know, are pretty simple and straightforward that you already know. But some, maybe you aren't comfortable, maybe you're new to Linux like I am, and you want to have a couple ways to ensure that you have the files that you need. Backing up files is something that's not new to anyone who uses a computer, but maybe you're new to Linux like I am and you are unsure of a couple of things that you need to do. Today I'm gonna to look at two main ways to back up your system, and I'm sure there are other ways that I'll learn, but one allows you to back up your system with scheduling on your desktop without having to think, and the other, is a physical way to get a large file set backed up and transferable to multiple computers. So let's take a look. The first way um, I'm gonna walk through backing up your system is just a cool way. The file system that I use is BetterFS and this is TimeShift. TimeShift is cool. And I'm just gonna show you the wizard that they have to see how you can back up your system. So when I turn on my system and I'm about to update something or upgrade something, this can be scheduled and set to back up. I'm gonna to go to the wizard here. Look there, you've got your select snapshot type. This is similar to the time machine that's in Mac OS X, but this is its own thing, but you will sense some similarities there. And it's asking where do I wanna back it up right now. I have an NVMe storage drive up here and I have my NVMe drive on my laptop and there it is. It'll walk you through. Do you want to back up daily? Do you wanna back up hourly? Do you wanna back up when you boot up the system? Weekly, monthly, you can set that up. So you can include your home subvolume um, and back them up as well, and enable the BetterFS Q groups. You can see the size of my backups getting larger as I've been working and making my system my own, but it's so easy. And then you can just go ahead, let's say you're about to do something crazy and you know that you want to go ahead and just create a backup. You create backup, snapshot was created, and it's done easy. Love me some time shift. There's also some setup you can do to have it be accessible through BetterFS on the Grub boot up menu. So if things are bored, you can go to an earlier snapshot, which is way cool. To me, time shift gives you a way to keep your core system intact. And if something happens, you can roll back. That's what I see that being most used for. Another way to back up your system is with an external device, like a USB flash drive or an external hard drive. Um, today, we're gonna to be working with this external enclosure for an M.2 NVMe drive. It's got a USB-C port on the back. My Dell laptop, my Dell G15 laptop has a Thunderbolt port on it and I'm going to patch this in. We'll switch over to my desktop again. And I wanna show you this because when you're setting up your backup situation, for me, this is more than just a backup when I put it on an external drive. Sometimes I'm wanting to back up when I'm at work. We have a couple of backup drives that essentially we log and lock up in a safe and they're logged with our files for the past couple of years, we do video editing. And so we need to keep some of those files available for us, but we don't want it taking up a lot of space. We don't have an amazing online storage situation. So we had to come up with that. And that's one way to do that. But what if you're like me and you deal with multiple file systems, you um, work with a Mac at work, and then you go to and work with Windows, and then you're at home and working on your Linux computer, you need a way to back things up, transfer files. We're gonna walk through that really quickly. So back on my desktop here, and I am going to plug 
this in. It's in the back of my laptop. And there it is. You see it pop up there with a notification. It sees it as an NVMe drive. It showed how much space. And then on my Dolphin file browser, it popped up down here. Removable devices, NVMe. It's there, ready to go. USB-C should be able to transfer at 10 gigabits per second. Uh, a Thunderbolt port can handle up to 40 gigabytes per second. I'm needing to move off some files that I've done. I've done 18 episodes. This will be the 19th episode today in 19 days. I'm doing 60 episodes in 60 days. If you're still staying tuned, thank you very much. What I want to do is I want to move it off onto this drive and I needed to set up my file system to be able to move from different computers. So what I did is I set this up as XFAT. And XFAT doesn't have some of the same limitations as FAT32 does. And it allows me to plug it into a Mac computer, plug it into a Linux computer, plug it into a Windows computer, and be able to transfer the files. Not only am I backing up the files, but I'm also making this a transferable situation between my devices. I'm going to control click these right here. And I know I can shift and just select all, but I am going to just select these. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to properties. And this is 17.4 gigabytes. If you've tried to transfer something onto a USB drive, a flash drive through USB 2.0 or 3.0 even, or an external hard drive, this could take a fair amount of time. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm gonna open this up in a new tab. This is my NVMe drive. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste. I've got this label backup and stuff. <laughs> and I'm gonna create a folder for myself labeled videos. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. I'm hoping with this very unscientific method to see how fast this will transfer. And let's see. Is this 10 gigabytes a second? No. <laughs> This is not 10 gigabytes a second, but that was two or three gigabytes a second. I just transferred 17 gigabytes in what felt like 10 seconds. That was awesome. I've got these transferred. I've got them backed up now and I can move them however I want. I did want to show you a couple of pieces here with that external drive. I didn't just want a SSD drive or uh, something I wanted to try to get my transfer rate as quick as possible, mostly because of my video workflow. I also was wondering if this bus would be quick enough for me to edit directly from the drive. I haven't tried that yet, but I believe it should be fast enough for me to work directly from the drive. Plus, I got this killer deal on this M.2 NVMe. I've never heard of silicon power. <laughs> no idea. What I can tell you is, is it is an NVMe M.2 drive. It does have a terabyte worth of storage on it. The Gen 3 speeds, the read speed is 2200 megabytes per second, so 2.2 gigabytes per second, which is about what we were actually experiencing. So the bottleneck was not the external drive. It was the actual M.2 NVMe drive. Oh, and write speeds of 1600 megabytes per second. Man, I'm getting exactly what I asked for. And I don't think I'd be getting that kind of speed on an external hard drive or even a USB 3.0. If I had a Thunderbolt external with the newest, latest, and greatest, I probably could get some sweet speeds in my transfer rates. But I wanted to show you this. It was 79 bucks, and then the external drive is $26. So I spent $100 and got a really great quick and easy transfer situation. This was made by Ugreen. This is their M.2 NVMe and SATA SSD enclosure reader. It shows 10 gigabits per second, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2. And it says it's Thunderbolt 3 compatible. This works great. It was easy. You open it up, you put the NVMe drive in. It's got a little tab that holds it in, plug it in, and then you format it. With Linux, you have partition managers 
If you're using uh, Endeavor OS, I did have to download a package to be able to read and write to XFAT. It was super simple. You can see what is on my PCIe SSD, how much space is being used, how much space is left. This is my current drive that's inside my laptop. And you can partition, you can format, and boom, you can work with this quite simply. So when you're setting this up, you're going to have to format the drive, partition it however you choose. If you don't want to partition and use as much space as you can, like I did with my XFET drive, it's easy to do. There are many ways to partition and format your drives in Linux, in Windows or Mac, whatever you're using. I just wanted to quickly show you today two ways to back up and file transfer your system, specifically if you're using Linux. These ways allow for you to feel safe as you're working and learning uh, Linux, or if you feel safe with a work environment computer. Like I mentioned, I'm doing 60 videos in 60 days. On the 60th day, I will walk through why I chose to do it, how I did it. Those questions hopefully will be answered. For someone like myself working on this daily, I want to ensure that I have the files that I need and I'm going to be able to transfer the files that I need safely and securely without me having to think about it too much. Thank you for joining me today. See you later.